Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Praise God. Let's all stand. Amen. We're going to start this service off right. We're going to pray. We're going to talk to the Lord. And uh, we're just going to glorify his name. Praise God. Let's join together right now. Let's pray. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Lord God, for your goodness and your mercy, Lord. We pray in Jesus that you would touch and move in this house tonight. And God, for all of those that are watching online. God, we're asking you to move, Lord Jesus, that you touch and move in their hearts tonight. Oh, God, oh, God, we give you praise and we give you glory, Lord. Right now, Jesus, we just praise you for your excellent greatness. Lord, we glorify you, God, according to your, to your wonderful mercies, Lord. They are everlasting, Lord. They are awesome. They are wonderful. And, Jesus, tonight we glorify your name and we thank you for your great power. In Jesus' name. Let's clap our hands to the Lord right now. Let's glorify his name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of, let's worship him tonight. In Jesus' name.
Lord. Your mercy endures, oh God. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for the Lord, where would I be? Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 
Amen, amen, amen. Reach over and give somebody an elbow bump. Amen. Tell them the Lord's in the house tonight. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. You can be seated for just a moment. Uh, we're going to pray. We're going to ask the Lord to move. Uh, lots of requests tonight. We want to remember Paige and the Lorman family. Remember Sister Murnahan. God's touching her. My wife has been spending time with her since she came home. But uh, please keep her in your prayers. God is moving, and we're thankful. Praise the Lord. And uh, remember Sister Georgia Jack, she's at home, a lot of pain, but I know that God is touching her, amen, and he will do a great work in her life. Amen. Praise God. Just got a message, says about the same, amen, as this morning is what she is. So we'll keep that in mind. Please pray for Brother Cliff Thomas, Brother and Sister Harold Blaylock, Brother Bill Hupp, it's good to see him here tonight, Sister Potts. Sean and Mallory Campbell. Remember Sean. Sean is having a very hard time breathing, and so uh, there's some concern over that. But I know God's got this. Amen. Amen. God will take care of this. Please remember Dar Darlene Garrett. Amen. Remember Lori Christmas, Ed Kessler, Sister Tammy Williams, Jerry Kling, Jerry Klingler, Scott, and uh, Melissa. Is that Slatzer? Slatzer? Huh? Okay. Slazer. Did I say it right? Salazer. Come here. Somebody, come here. Oh, hey, there we go. All right, Brother Larry. Help us out here. Slazer. Did I get it? Everybody clap your hands to the Lord. I can be taught. Sometimes. Praise God. Slate, sir. Amen. Remember Nathan and Missy Dunwoody? Did I say that All right? Okay. In the Sam Russell family, pray for them. Uh, remember Sister Robin and Sister Ethan. Prayer and pray for Brother Dale. He's needing work right now. So, Amen. Please keep him in your prayers. And then, uh, did I say darling Garrett? Yes, I did. So, praise the Lord. We're trusting God that he's going to move in each of these situations. We serve a mighty God. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, I'm so excited when we get to pray. Amen, because I know that the Lord is moving. And uh, the nurse came in today while we were having church here at uh, mother-in-law's house. And uh, my, uh, she said that, uh, came in and been checking her, and she said that she could hear all the way down into the bottom of her lungs. Now, I'm not a doctor, a medical person, but I think that's a good thing. Is that a good thing, Sister Brenda? So, improvement. She ate a couple of gallons worth of uh, orange sherbet today. <laughs> She's watching right now. At least I hope she is. So that's just for her. Yeah, bless her, Lord. <laughs> Amen. We're just having too much fun. Hey, some people said it's Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah, we're having a Super Bowl time right now. Amen. Amen in the presence of the Lord. And we're praying for things that really matter. Right. Something that will matter in eternity. Praise God. And I'm so glad for that. Let's all stand. If you'd like to be anointed for your healing. And we don't just pray for people. But we pray and we expect God to do something. Amen. Amen. Not that he serves us. We serve him. But he is able to do abundantly and exceedingly above all that we can ask or think. According to the power that works in us. Let's call on him right now. If you'd like to be anointed, come up to the front. Lord Jesus, we call on you right now. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for your great touch in Jesus' name. Asking you, Lord God, that you would move in the mightiest of ways. Oh, Lord Jesus, you see each of these needs tonight. And God, we're praying, Lord, that you would touch your page and and her family, Lord, the Lorman family, Sister Williams. Pray that you touch Sister Robin, Brother Ethan, Brother, Brother Dale, Lord, for work. God, continue to pray, Lord, for Sister Rhonda, my hand. God, touch Sister Georgia Jacks. Heal her body, God. 
See the pain that she's in right now. Brother Cliff Thomas, Sister Orpha. Pray for the Blaylocks, Lord. We're praying for Brother Harold and Sister Sheila, God, in Jesus' name. Praying for Brother Hup tonight, Lord, that you would move. Praying, God, for Sister Potts. Praying for Sean and Mallory, God. Touch Sean's lungs. God, heal him, Lord. Oh, God, we know that you're on the throne, Lord. We're just not asking for just a regular healing. We're asking for a miraculous healing, God, tonight so that he would know, Lord, that you're moving on his behalf. We're praying for Darlene, Darlene Garrett, Lord, for Laura Christmas. Lord Jesus, asking you to touch Jerry Klingler, Ed Kessler, Lord, God, that you would move. Asking you to touch Scott and Melissa Slatzer, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we trust you in all of these situations. Know that you're able, God. We're praying, Lord Jesus, oh, Lord, for all of those that are in hospital with COVID, Lord, asking you to move in the mightiest of ways. God, asking you to send revival in this city, in this church, Lord, and God, that you would move. Lord, we just give you glory, Lord, for that tonight. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We give you praise. Oh, I think it'd be great if we just clapped our hands uproariously for the Lord one more time. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. We thank you and we praise you. God, send strength and peace, oh, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You may be seated asking the ushers to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's something about worshiping the Lord. Worshiping Him and understanding that he moves diligently when we call on his name. Hallelujah. He does move. He is an ever-present help in the time of need. Amen. He owns a cattle on a thousand hillsides, and he owns the hillsides. Praise God. Please remember that tonight is the deadline uh, for your first payment for NAYC. So if you'd please, who are they supposed to see? Michael. Brother Michael. So if you see Brother Michael, then also coming up next week is Mia Moore's birthday. My wife, Sister Henderson, otherwise known as Becky Henderson. It's her birthday, and it's on Valentine's Day, so it's double jeopardy for me. It's either two presents or the doghouse. I choose two presents. I'm going to buy her a Big Mac and a Whopper. We're going to hit two stores, and it's going to be powerful. Come on now. I'm getting, I'm getting some amens out there, Sister Henderson. I'm sorry. This might have to become a reality for you. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Aren't you glad you know him? Praise the Lord. Uh, so it will be a card shower for her next Sunday if you would, would uh, have it in your heart to, to provide this young lady with a card. I know she would appreciate it. And she loves cards. And uh, so we're very thankful for that. Uh, please remember our midweek service. Amen. And uh, Wednesday, 7 o'clock. And uh, next Sunday, just, just invite somebody to the house of the Lord. Wouldn't it be great? We had a good, uh, good crowd in here this morning. And uh, I really just believe the Lord wants to fill the house. Amen. I don't know what's going on, but it just seems like I'm wanting to knock some walls out back there. I don't know about you. Uh, please pray that uh, for safety for the electricians and the HVAC people. Uh, HVAC is coming tomorrow. The uh, lights and the fans and all the stuff is coming tomorrow for out in the family center. And then Tuesday, the electricians are supposed to be here to install all of that. Oh, glory to God. I'm not sure how long we've been working on this, but God's, God's in control. He knows what he's doing, and he's providing. And we're thankful for that. Praise God. So, we're going to pray. Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this opportunity to give to you. I thank you, Jesus, that your grace is greater, Lord, than my faults. Lord Jesus, I, so many times I fall short, oh Lord, of what is really necessary. But I know, God, that if I call on your name, you will meet the need. Lord, you will supply. And I'm praying, Jesus, that in each and every life, God, that you would supply every need. God, give these folks raises. Give them better jobs. Give them, Lord, blessings, you know. Just cause their, their taxes, Lord. Just give it all that money back to them, Lord. I'm praying in Jesus' name. And, God, that you would just bless them. Bless, bless our efforts, Lord. Reach, help the dollars that we give towards missions to reach around the world. Oh, Lord God, and that you would just bless all of these things. And Lord, in Jesus' name, we give you praise and we thank you for it. And everybody said amen. amen. God bless you. Let's worship with the praise team as uh, they come back. Praise God.
Hallelujah. Jesus, you have an audience of one right now. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He inhabits the praises of his people. You have an audience of one right now. Hallelujah. Ask what you will. Hallelujah. I worship you, oh God. Hallelujah, Moshe. I want you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe you're still here. I believe you're still working in the midst. I believe, God, you're still in control. Somebody shout unto God with a voice of triumph tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. I refuse to be quiet. I refuse to sit down. Hey, man, I don't care what the enemy says, what the devil says. I'm going to worship the Lord. I'm going to give him praise. Hey, man, we're going to glorify his name. We're going to lift him up. Hallelujah. He's worthy, so worthy to be praised. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so glad that we could have a Holy Ghost party tonight. How about you? Amen. Please remember Brother Gary Vaughn in your prayers as well. He's got COVID. He and his family, they live in Illinois, great friends of ours. Please keep him in your prayers that God would just touch him and heal him completely. Amen. Amen. Tonight, Brother Scott's going to come and minister the word of the Lord. Amen. Well, Scott received the Holy Ghost on a Super Bowl Sunday night. Wouldn't it be great if somebody else got the Holy Ghost tonight for the very first time? Somebody can get it while they're watching online tonight. Amen. I just believe that God can do it. Hallelujah. We can get calls for people to come that want to get baptized in Jesus' name. We're ready for whatever you need. Praise God. Why don't we lift him up one more time? Let's glorify and magnify the name of Jesus. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are saved in Jesus name. God bless you. Come preach for us tonight, Brother Scott, in Jesus name. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor. So glad to be in the house of God tonight. Just to feel his presence. Something special when you come into the presence of the Lord. Yes, there is a Super Bowl going on. There's something special going on here tonight. The Holy Ghost is here. I said the Holy Ghost is here tonight. God's ready to do something tonight. God's ready to work in the supernatural tonight. I believe it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm just so honored to be allowed to be up here to speak unto everyone here tonight. Just give honor to Brother and Sister Henderson. So glad they're back in the house of God. Missed you so much when you was out. <laughs> Praise God. Just going to continue to lift them up in prayer at all times. Praise God. Well, we're going to turn the word of the Lord tonight to Philippians chapter 3. Start at verse 4. We'll go down to verse 13. Praise God. God is in control. Praise God. Amen. Philippians chapter 3, starting at verse 4. He says, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath thereof, he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is the law, blameless. 
But what things were gained to me, those I count a loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but for loss, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I might know him. Everybody say, I may know him. In the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might obtain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forth unto those which are before I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, I'm going to press on tonight in the name of Jesus. I'm going to reach for the things of God here tonight. I press on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, can we bow our heads and pray right now? Let's pursue the things of God in this house tonight. Jesus, above everything else, above all the noise, above all the confusion, above all the hoopla surrounding everything in this world, God, I press toward the mark. I reach for those things that are before me. In you, Lord Jesus, God, I reach out. I grab a hold of them, Lord. I haven't apprehended it yet, Lord, but I'm reaching for it in this place tonight. I'm searching for it. I'm seeking for it, God, with all of my heart. I I press towards that mark for the prize. I'm going to attain it in the name of Jesus Christ. And I believe we're going to do it here tonight. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you clap your hands and give praise unto God right now? Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated. Super Bowl Sunday. It's well known. It will be the most watched sporting event, most watched event period today, especially. Everybody wants to watch the Super Bowl. They have parties. They, they fix nachos with cheese. They have wings. They have pizza with lots of cheese on it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please don't leave for the exits right now. I got you hungry. But these parties, they have all kinds of food and all these things, and we gorge on those things, and... We sit in front of a television, and even if you don't like the teams, you still watch it because you think that's the thing you're supposed to do. I mean, I am rooting for a certain team just because of a certain player. I'd like to see him win. There's other people that would like other teams to win. We won't mention his name tonight, Michael Tacker. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> but why do people watch it? Why do people identify it? Well, people like to see people victorious. They like the pursuit of victory. So we follow, along with them, the season-long pursuit of a championship. They call it the Vince Lombardi Trophy, and that's what they're pursuing. And we watch with anticipation as 22 men out on the field at a time all want to be victorious. They fight one another. They grab, they hold, they kick, they punch, they spit, and they do all kinds of things we probably can't even mention over the air. Praise God. But all are after that trophy. They're pursuing it. A trophy is defined as a cup or other decorative object awarded as a prize for a victory or success. Basically, a memorial of your victory. A memorial of how you defeated the enemy. Now, man has this figured out. They found ways to personalize trophies. They carry their Super Bowl rings with them all the time. I mean, if you just ask those guys, they got them big old rings, and they're worth like ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. I'm like, my goodness, that's worth more than my truck. Praise God. But these men are pursuing a trophy, a ring, a prize. And everyone has chased trophies, not just in sporting events, but we've chased things in our lives. Now, I, I, I've chased trophies in my life, and you can just bear with me for one moment. i got some trophies I want to show you guys. I have some trophies. They may not be as glamorous as some other people's trophies. Sister Hanson probably has just a trophy case full at home. Oh. 
trophy wife. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. I got some trophies here. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to have to prop this one up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Look at that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that, dude. Hang on. I'll get out of the way here in a minute. There we go. All right. There. Look at them beautiful trophies. Aren't they beautiful? <laughs> I ain't got no bowling trophies. Maybe for the worst bowler, but not for the best bowler. That's for sure. But we got all kinds of trophies here. We actually have trophies. When we was in Christian school, they would give us trophies for completing the quarter, and that's what that one is right there. I think it's awesome. Now, now if, if the trophy wasn't as broken, <laughs> I would have brought my Student of the Year trophy. It's a little bit jacked up. <laughs> I must say, <laughs> praise God. But uh, here, just show off a couple of these. This trophy for my basketball team. I was a leading scorer on my basketball team. And this was back in, uh, see, I got to check the year, 92 and 93. Good Lord, that's a long time ago. <laughs> Woo! Man. <laughs> and, you know, back then, the, the popular team was the dream team. So it's actually engraved on here, the dream team. We was the dream team. The bad thing is we only won one game that year, so we wasn't very a dream team. <laughs> hey, one win wonders, but... We was winless until the last game, and I led the team to victory. I scored 18 points, a team high 18 points, and we were victorious. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm getting on the big head here. We're, we're going to go to this one. Now, this, this is beautiful. This is for memorizing Bible scripture. Yeah. Isn't that pretty? 1991. Woo. Long time ago. We, we used to get, uh, brother, brother Andy would give us uh, prizes for learning scripture in fact we even took a trip to kings it was either kings island or cedar point one of them amusement parks don't ask about the ride up there it was interesting praise god <laughs> but we used to learn those things and then i got this this little plaque here for my billy league football team that was i was actually an all-star that year in billy league football the first ever all-star team that they had i don't even think they had the billy league no more or they just condensed it back in 1993. It's powerful. Praise God. But this one right here. Can you, can you see that logo on the front? Can, can you see something carved out? Anybody know where Maysville High School is? Okay, okay. It's got a little panther on here. A little panther here. Maysville Basketball Camp. Most improved. That's what's up right there. The, the coach that was teaching that, you know, he's like, that guy, he's going to be good. He's going to be good. That's just some of the trophies I, I had. And, well, if, if, if you don't know, uh, my brother was, was a bit of a legend there in basketball. They were both known at Maysville, trust me, <laughs> for different things. <laughs> But uh, I, get, I get that trophy right there, and Coach Ryder was the coach of the men's high school basketball team, and they just wanted me to play so bad. And the pressure was on because, if you don't know, my brother's Jason Razor. For those of you who don't know, pretty much everybody in here should know. People online may not know. But he was, he's my brother, and he uh, was MVL Player of the Year in 1994. Also, they won the NBL championship that year. And just last year, he was inducted into the Maysville Hall of Fame. Woo! Woo. Man. Then I get this most improved. 
<laughs> now, I, 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 I am a bit younger than my brother, so they actually was kind of looking at me, putting a little bit of pressure on me to play basketball in high school. And, they, and they, that's, that's the expectation. The pressure was on. But that was not the pursuit of my life. When it came to high school, I did not play basketball. I had other things. You know, everyone pursues something different in their life, whether it's the prettiest girl or guy. You know, not, not for you. The fastest car. The best clothes, you know. Got to have that designer label, that designer tag in there. The nicest house. Oh, my, just got to have the nicest house with the biggest swimming pool in the backyard. And you got to have that just beautiful kitchen. You got to have all those nice things, big closets, all those things. Got to have the best job. We pursue these things. We're always aspiring for bigger and better things. But for me, that pursuit changed on January 31st, 1994. And yes, I am going to talk about it tonight. And as Brother Mark reminded me this morning about my anniversary, he goes, happy anniversary. And I go, anniversary? I didn't get married. That's not my... It's like, this is news to me. <laughs> but but I, 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 I kind of thought I knew what he was talking about. I kind of thought. And then, you know, he goes, no, your, your Holy Ghost anniversary, you got the Holy Ghost on a Super Bowl Sunday. That was the day everything changed for me. The things I used to pursue, I didn't pursue those anymore. Those trophies that I wished to attain, these trophies right here, they didn't mean a hill of beans, and they still don't mean a hill of beans to me. They're nice to look at, but it's okay. But I quit football because it interfered with church services. I quit basketball because I would have to miss going to youth services. They tried to get me on the golf team, but I would have had to miss NAYC. I turned it down. My pursuit was no longer aimed at all the things I could obtain in this world, but my pursuit was directed to all the things of God. So when I spoke in tongues, on that Super Bowl Sunday, as men pursued a trophy and pursued a bigger paycheck, I rejoiced because I found something that night worth pursuing. I found something so much better, so much greater, something real, something that satisfied my soul, something that got in my spirit, something that no trophy could ever give me, something that no football game could ever give me. It was the Holy Ghost. It was real. It was powerful. And it touched my life. And I've not been the same ever since. Hallelujah. Oh, I've not been the same since, since I received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that day, God placed a calling upon my life. God is calling out the people here tonight. Just because it's a Super Bowl Sunday doesn't mean God's not still moving. I believe God can move more powerfully tonight than he ever has before. Just because men are out there hitting each other, trying to obtain a trophy, trying to pursue the ultimate prize, to be the victorious one, to raise that trophy up there. But you can come to an altar here tonight. You can go to an altar right there on your couch where you're at in your home. And you can obtain something greater, something that will lift you up. You don't have to lift it up, but you lift it up. You be lifted up by the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost that transformed you and makes you new. Oh, hallelujah. My pursuit was no longer aimed by the things of this world. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You can try to pursue and obtain your dream job. You can try and pursue and obtain your dream home. But if you don't have God, if you don't have the Holy Ghost living in your heart, you're missing out on the greatest experience you could ever have, you could ever think of, better than anything in this world can ever offer you. See, people are out there looking for it at the end of a needle. People are looking out for it out there in a bar. They're going to bars. They're trying to find something, a relationship with something, something that will take away their sorrow, someone that will take away 
away the pain and all the hatred and all the anger in their lives. But I got news for you. If you come into the house of God, you come before his presence with singing. You begin to make a joyful noise before the Lord all your lands and begin to serve the Lord with gladness. I'm telling you, you'll find exactly what you need when you come before Jesus. When you lift up holy hands without wrath or without doubt and you give all your burdens to God, you lay it down at an altar and say, I give it to you, Jesus. I give you everything. I give you control. I give you my life. I give you my all. I, I, I can't live this way no more. I need something more. I need something that will change me. Something that will lift me up. <laughs> you can't find it out there. I've heard people all across that. Oh, we had a great time at the bar last night. I can't remember what happened, but we had a great time at the bar last night. I had the biggest hangover and all those things. I've never had one of those. For those of you that have had it, I've not heard good stories about those. <laughs> the headache. The time spent on your knees praying to John. It's not a great thing to be doing. I don't like doing it when I'm sick. I don't want to make myself sick. When Brother Henderson, when you were sick, I'm sure you don't want to have that experience again. You don't want to experience what it feels like to be dragged through the mud and through the muck and the mire of this world because that's exactly how you feel when you put your hope, when you put your trust in the things of this world. But when you get a hold of the things of God, when you begin to pray, when you begin to give your life unto God, I'm here to tell you, you're not going to feel like you're drugged through the mud, but you're going to feel the peace of God which passeth all understanding and the power of the Holy Ghost that transformed them back on Acts 2.38 when Peter said to them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That same power, I said that same power, that same power, that's here tonight to transform somebody, to give somebody a super Sunday like they've never experienced before in their life. When you get a hold of God, it changes you. It it lifts you up. It heals you. It strengthens you. And it blesses you. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. We are missing out on something when we don't pursue God. The pursuit is what it's all about. We must pursue God. You could be missing out on the greatest experience of your life. See, Paul had many experiences in his life. And he listed them through that scripture. All those things he went through, all the trials, even persecuted Christians, did all kinds of bad things. But he went, made one of the most important discoveries in his life, the purpose for which he was born. You see, some people never really get their true purpose in life. They really never understand where they're supposed to be and what they're supposed to be doing. Have you ever had any of these statements come out of your mouth? Why was I born? Why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? I don't feel like I do anybody any good. I'm bored with life in general. Contrary to what the world will try to tell you, God didn't make a mistake when he made you. Somebody needs to hear that tonight. Contrary to what the world tries to tell you, I don't care what side of the fence you are on politically. God didn't make no junk. God loves you, Democrat, Republican, Libertarian. He loves you all. He created you. He loves you. You are his children, and you have redemption in his name when you give it to him. But God didn't make that mistake. And there's another key word in there, apprehended. It means to attain You've arrived. You've finished. I've got it all together. But he, he said, I, I ain't got that yet. Paul knew he wasn't perfect. If there's one of you that think you're perfect in here, that's your first lie. Your perfection's gone. But he knew God was still working on him. You see, we got to understand that we're works in progress. We're not the finished product that we need to be. We're still a work in progress. God is still molding us and making us and shaping us and speaking into us. God's not done with you yet. He has plans for you. He has a purpose for your life, as it says in Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 through 14. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, 
Too much evil thoughts going out in this world. But the things of God are at peace. They're not of evil. Hallelujah. To give you an expected end. Oh, an expected end. We don't know the end, but God expects that end. He knows where you are going to end up. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. God will listen to you in your darkest hour when you're feeling down and out. You can call upon God. He hears you. Go and pray to him and he will listen. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. We can't just have those half-hearted prayers where we think God's just going to say, Oh, it's okay, little one. Uh, you, you're going to be just fine and all those things. Sometimes you've got to get down and get gritty with God you got to pursue him like your life depends upon it you got to pursue God until all the walls come crashing down all the waves around you they're coming and they're trying to tear you apart but you can pursue God and call upon God and say God I need you in my darkest hour and he will hear you I said God will hear you stop trying to take it to the doctor stop trying to take it to your friends why don't you go ahead and take it to Jesus why don't you go ahead and pray and call upon his name when you're feeling down and out when those thoughts invade your mind when you feel like you have no purpose why don't you call upon God God will give you direction God will give you purpose God will give you a calling in your life that we need oh the pursuit of God is what we need in our lives praise God search for him with all your heart verse 14 says I will be found by you says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. Sometimes we get saved and we get touched by the Lord and we think everything's okay, but then we put our guards down and we, and we think we don't have to do anything else. So we kind of fall back into our old ways and we kind of go back into captivity. We fall back into the hands of the enemy. But when you call upon the Lord, you don't have to stay there just because you made a mistake. You don't have to stay where you've fallen to. You don't have to stay down on the ground. It's time to lift up your head, lift up your eyes, lift up your voice, and call upon God. Help me, Jesus. Help me, God, through my struggle. Help me through the pain. I will bring you back from captivity. That's a powerful promise from God. I will bring you back because God doesn't forget about you. Just because we think we feel we're so far away from God doesn't mean he's not there. He's wanting you to cry out in desperation. He's wanting you to call upon his name. He's wanting you to pursue him with your whole heart. In pursuing God, we get down on our knees and we begin to pray. God hears us even when we think we're all alone. Oh, Oh. You must hear me tonight. You know, there's a God that loves each and every one of you. Oh, I don't know if you believe me tonight. There's a God that loves you. You're here for a reason. You're here for a purpose. You're watching for a reason. You're watching because there's a purpose for your life. There's a God that's not forgetting about you. There's been people in this church praying. There's been people calling, crying out on their face and say, God, help this person through their struggle. Help this person through their sickness. And I've seen it time and time again where our prayers do not fall on deaf ears. But it's a sweet, savory incense unto God. And when we lift it up unto God, he hears our cry. God has heard those cries tonight. And God is reaching for someone in this place. If you would just give it to him right now, he's going to lift you up. If you pursue him with everything you got, don't just come up with just half-hearted little praise. It's time to get bold. It's time to dance. It's time to shout. It's time to call upon the name of Jesus with all that's within you. Not just that now I lay me down to sleep, but God and Mercy on me! Blind Bartimaeus didn't care. 
how loud he was. He needed something from God. So he began to cry out with a loud voice, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And the crowd told him to be quiet. They said, he doesn't need to hear from you. But did that not deter Bartimaeus? He said a little bit louder, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And I think things begin to start to change right there because he was not going to be defeated by the voice of the enemy. He was not going to listen to those who said you'll never amount to nothing. You can't live for God. You go too far, God. I got news for you. It's time for someone to cry out to Jesus. Even in the middle of your haters, even in the middle of the fear, even in the middle of the doubt, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, heal me. Touch me. Restore things unto me. Oh, I am a... Bartimaeus cried out. Jesus heard him. I said Jesus heard him. He may, he may have not thought he heard him the first time. May have not thought he heard him the second time. But when it come to that third time, he said, I got to heal that man. I haven't seen such a great of faith. Somebody needs to step out on faith here tonight and cry out to God. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Lift me up. I need you. I'm going to pursue you. No matter what comes against me. No matter my trial and tribulations no matter how the crowd seems to say be quiet God's not real my God's real my God saves my God delivers my God heals he's not fiction he's real he moves he heals the captive he restores the broken heart he blesses the sickness he can heal cancer he can heal anything he's a God of miracles Shamaka. <laughs> Praise God. I'm going to get a little bit off my notes here. I saw on Twitter today. Yes, I still get on Twitter. And it kind of made me angry. Now, I'm not going to try to preach angry up here, okay? It's not what it's about. <laughs> I saw something that hurt my heart. <laughs> People on there openly condemning Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, it didn't matter what the person said. They began to condemn and throw spew hatred and all those things. <laughs> and I could just feel it almost coming off the screen right into my face. <laughs> And I could feel an evil spirit within it. I had to shut it off. And I had to call upon the name of Jesus. <laughs> Sometimes when things come against us, we're too, we're too ready to accept the hate. And we're too ready to accept that we've been defeated. But when you feel that spirit come against you, when you feel like the gates of hell, when you feel like the devil's coming right, he's got you in his sight. You say, not today, Satan. Greater is is he that's within me than he that is in this world you can tell that devil to be gone you gotta resist him he'll flee he's gotta go he don't belong here he don't belong in my house he don't belong in my mind he don't belong in my heart he don't belong anywhere near here ah, yeah Time to stand up bold against the, th the things that are fighting against us, the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness. They're getting a little bit too loud for my taste. Why don't we get a little bit loud back and begin to worship God? You think the Super Bowl is great and the roar of the crowd is great on Super Bowl? You wait till you come into the house of God on a Sunday service where Lifeway Church begins to sing Waymaker, Miracle Worker. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's a promise keeper. He's a light in the darkness. And people begin to dance. People begin to shout. People begin to rejoice because they found something that's greater than any Super Bowl could ever be. Oh, yeah. Oh, can we lift our hands? <laughs> oh, let's pray right now. <laughs> oh, let's begin to call on the God right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I've not obtained it yet, but I'm getting ready to obtain <laughs> the blessings of God. <laughs> I'm going to seek him first. <laughs> I'm going to seek him with all my heart. <laughs> I'm glad that's how you find him. <laughs> you seek him with everything you got. You lay it all before Jesus. <laughs> you got to lay your phone down. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> you lay your trophy down. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> you lay your wallet down. <laughs> Anything that prohibits you from getting your blessings from God, <laughs> you lay it down this holder. <laughs> Cast your cares on him. Cast your burdens on him. All you that are weary and heavy laden, he's going to give you rest. He's going to give you rest. He's going to give you rest. Jesus. Oh, that's how we get an expected end. Give it to God. Give it to God. Oh, Shama. Oh, you're not going to stay in captivity anymore. <laughs> Your pursuit's going to bring you right out of that mire clay. <laughs> oh, set me on that solid rock. <laughs> Set me upon Jesus. Set me on something when the winds come against me. I will not be pushed. I will not be beaten. I will not be downtrodden. I won't have to worry what the wind does. It will not toss me to and fro because I'm founded on Jesus. Oh, oh, God. I pursue you, Jesus. Oh, how am I, Yandala? Oh, Shamakata. Our pursuit's not going to end. Until the trumpet sounds. First uh, Thessalonians 4, 16, 17. For the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with God. Oh. <laughs> We're going to be Brother Dennis up there. We're going to be Brother Potts up there. The saints of old. It's going to be a big old Holy Ghost party up in heaven. When one of these days that trumpet sounds, I've got to pursue it. I've got to be ready for it. I need to be ready for Jesus to touch my life, to lift me up so I can walk on streets of gold, so I can have no more pain and no more sorrow. That's what heaven's going to be. That's what I'm pursuing. Jesus, I'm a shot my pursuit is not in the trophies of this world. If you guys want trophies at the church, you can have them. It's not what my pursuit is. It's not the fame. It's not the money. It's not all the material things of this world. My pursuit is to live for God. I'm in a heavenly pursuit tonight. <laughs> I'm in something that's going to make a difference in my life. <laughs> a Super Bowl will be forgotten next year and they will play another one. <laughs> but when you get saved by the grace of God, when you get Holy Ghost filled, <laughs> I didn't forget it. <laughs> 1994 is a long time ago, <laughs> but it's still real today. <laughs> it's still feeling in my soul. It still makes me want to dance. <laughs> it still makes me want to shout. It still makes me want to praise God with everything within me. <laughs> it's not dead. <laughs> God's not dead. His power's not dead. He didn't stay with him on the grave. Third day he rose. His power made a way for you and me. Come on. Jesus. I'm looking to heavenly things tonight. We got to stay on course, church. We got to stay on course. But in order to stay on course, there's one thing we must do. Forgetting those things which are behind me. This one thing I do trips up a lot of saints, trips up a lot of people. Their past, those things that are behind them, their mistakes, their failures. There's many times where just out of the clear blue, I have these random memories where it just puts me in a bad and a dark place. I'm like, what's going on here? What's trying to take place? It's something that's behind me. It's something I'm not living in right now, but yet it still haunts me. Yet it still comes after my mind. But it's time to give it all to Jesus. Forget those things. Forget your past. Forget your mistakes and call upon the name of Jesus. Forgetting those things which are behind me. You know how you do it? You reach forth 
listen to those things which are before. You reach out for God. You reach out for that Holy Ghost. You reach out for that anointing. You reach out for that blessing. You say, I got to be in the house of God. You say, I got to praise God. When the team, worship team begins to sing, he's a mighty God. Whatever the song, when you begin to lift your voice and hands on the God, he'll move in your life. Doesn't matter what else is going on. Doesn't matter what comes against you. Doesn't matter what you face. More important thing is you pursuing God. I must pursue a life living for God. And I must reach for those things. There's something we need to always remember. The past, we can't change it. There's not been a time machine invented yet. Except for on movies. And those ain't real. Spoiler alert, just in case you didn't know, movies aren't real. <laughs> the past, you can't change it, but you can learn from it. You can learn from your mistakes. That's how you move forward. That's why history is so important. We need to learn from history. We need to learn from those things, those mistakes we made, because we've made mistakes. When we start looking back, you're dead on your tracks. Because the devil's got you right to sights, because you're not even looking forward. And he can trip you up. And take you down. That's what happened to Lot's wife. In Genesis 19, 26. But his wife looked back from behind him. If she just wouldn't have looked back. God was already preparing a place for them. God had already made a way out of that sin infested city. But she looked back. And she became a pillar of salt. Oh. <laughs> Luke 9, 62 says, No man having his, put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Huh. We just finished the month of January last Sunday. And that is the actual date anniversary. Yes, it was on Super Bowl night. Thank you. I'm glad you remembered. January 31st is my mother's birthday. I believe it is it Owen's birthday too. Owen's birthday. That was a good day. Go oh, oh. <laughs> But it's my Holy Ghost birthday. And we just finished that month. You know how January got its name? It comes from a Roman god, Janus. He has two faces. He's looking both forward and backwards. At the past and to the future. He was known as the god of beginnings. And eventually gave his name to the first month of the year, January. This is where the saying two-faced comes from. Not from a Batman villain. Sorry, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> People who say one thing and they do something else. We've all been there, met someone, maybe even done it ourselves. Some things, though, need to be forgotten. But some things need to be remembered, such as promises need to be remembered. But our failures, our past sinful ways, need to be forgotten. That's how you move on with your life. The only way to move forward, the only way to press on, is to stop looking where you've been and stop looking at your past and filling your heart with regret of decision you may have made. Because when you're baptized in the name of Jesus, let me say, when you're baptized in the only name, the saving name, the way Peter said in Peter 7, 10, repent, be baptized, everyone, you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. See, when you're baptized, your past becomes null and void. It's washed away. And your life is made new in Christ. As 1 Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ... He's a new creature. Old things are passed away. That person that you used to know, that person that I used to be, that's not who I am anymore. It's funny, I mentioned Jason earlier, that, that, that's the kind of man he used to be. He used to be someone who ran around and got into drugs and got into alcohol and got into all these different things. But when he came to God, things begin to change and begin to turn around. 
But the fact that when he came back and he met some of his old friends, they were like, who is this man? I don't recognize who he is. I don't understand you. You're not the same crude dude that I used to be in high school with. That's not who I remember. He said, well, God got a hold of me. <laughs> and just because you've made past mistakes and failures, just because you've been in the drugs, just because you've had thoughts of impurity against someone, just because you've had all those things invade your mind and you made all those mistakes, doesn't mean you can't move forward in Jesus Christ because we're not Janus. <laughs> we're not two-sided. <laughs> we're not looking to our past. <laughs> we're not looking to our mistakes. <laughs> but I press toward. <laughs> I press toward. <laughs> I press toward. <laughs> I press toward. <laughs> Does anybody want to press toward tonight? I press toward the mark. I press toward that trophy. I press toward the calling of God in my life. I press toward that anointing. I press toward that healing in my body. I'm pressing toward. I pursue it. I'm pursuing God with everything that's within me. There's a song we used to sing, and if I get the words wrong, I apologize. I know some people know the words better than I do, but it goes like this. There's a new man walking in my shoes. He don't do the things I used to do. There's been a great change in me. Is that right? This new man. Oh, he's as new as he can be. <laughs> when you get a fresh dose of the Holy Ghost moving in you, you may think you're old stuff. You may think you're just the past, a thing of the past. Your heyday was in the past. But I got news for you. Any man being Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. That old junk's gone. That old man's gone. There's a new man up here. There's a new man in the house tonight. And he's been filled. He's been saved. He's been delivered and set free by the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't know about you, but I'm not who you, I used to be. I'm a new man. I got a new touch tonight. I felt a new blessing from God. When I began to worship God, he made me new once again because he makes all things new. He doesn't leave you just the way that you came in. He changes you. He moves in your life. That's how Jesus gets a hold of you. I wouldn't be up here tonight without God filling me with the gift of the Holy Ghost. There's no way I could do this without God. But when God came into my life back in 1994, he's the same God that worked upon me as a little child when I was 12 years old. To the same almost 40-year-old man here stands before you. I feel that same power. I feel that same touch. I still feel that same anointing from God that I felt back then. It's not any different. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm able to stand here tonight and tell you, things do change when you pursue God. I said things do change when you pursue God. Things change when you call upon the name Jesus. Things change when you allow the fire of the Holy Ghost to purge out all the impurities, to purge out all the hatred, to purge out all those thoughts of impurity, and let God move in, and let God have control, and let God be in your heart, let God be in your mind, let God be in your spirit, let God be in your home, let God be in your car, let God be in your workplace, let God be everywhere you go. That's how. You get a touch from God. It consumes you. Don't ever allow an opportunity to worship God, to give your life to God, pass you by. If you've never given your life tonight to God or any time before, today's your day. Tonight's your night. It can be your Super Bowl Sunday. The pursuit does not end with just the, uh, the shut off of Facebook and say, I'm going to go back to the old things, how they used to be. I don't want things to go back to the way I used to be. I don't want to become the man I used to be. I don't want to fall into the patterns that I used to fall into. As a new man walking in my shoes. There's a new man who's been touched by the Lord. There's a new man who's been saved and delivered and set free. I can't explain it. I don't understand it. But when God came in, something changed. He did. He changed many things in my life. Don't allow a service a day, a morning to go by without calling upon the name of Jesus. Oh, you're better equipped when you start your day right, calling upon God and say, God, I need you through this day. I need you through the struggle that I may face. I need you to keep me safe upon the road, and I pray that every day. I pray for God to keep his hand protection upon me, upon many people in my life, and for those who've fallen away for God, I pray for them to come back to Jesus. But I feel it when I don't pray. I feel it when I don't communicate with God. I feel it when I don't pursue God. 
But when I reach out, I reach forth and I grab a hold of the hand of the master's hand. I feel something comfort. I feel a peace that passes all understanding. I feel something that I need in my everyday walk. You'll search for it all out in this world. You'll search for it at Super Bowl, whatever it is tonight, but you won't find it. But you'll find what you need and the everlasting, everlasting, ever true foundation upon Jesus Christ upon which we can stand when he grabs a hold of you and wraps his arms of love around you and says, I've been looking for you because I love you. You're my child. I got to pursue God. I don't need to pursue the things of this world. I got to bless the Lord at all times. I got to pursue God at all times. Let his praise continually flow from my mouth. When his praise continually flows from your mouth, there's not room for anything else. You see, when you got the things of God, you fill up with that. There's not room for the junk of this world to try to invade you. It's time to get a fresh anointing, a fresh fill of the Holy Ghost and fire tonight. And let it burn within your soul. Soul. And don't make room for the devil to come in and say, you can't make it. I'm putting fear in your heart. I'm putting hatred. I'm putting enmity. I'm putting strife. I'm putting all those thoughts in your mind. But when you get God in your mind, there's not room for the devil to invade because he can't overtake him. He's not great enough. He's not powerful enough. He's not strong enough. My God's greater. I said, my God's greater. <laughs> my God's stronger. <laughs> He's greater than any devil in hell. <laughs> He's greater than any Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> what I've experienced in God is the best thing ever. <laughs> I forgot my past. I reached forth. I'm praying. I'm calling upon God. But there's nothing that comes to us without pressing. <laughs> Take this pulpit, for example. Let me try to make it move right now. I don't think I got the Jedi powers. Wait, let me try again. Mm. I can think it all I want. What's the way to move this? got to press on. It can get heavy sometimes. Those things that are in front of you, <laughs> they're trying to keep you from the will of God. They're trying to keep you from reaching where you need to be in Him. you got to press on. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, I press to the mark. I press through the depression. I press through the fear. I press through it all. And I need to get to Jesus Christ. It's only by pressing and reaching out for the things of God where you will actually get what you need from Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but when I need something from God, I'm not going to just say, oh, God, just move me, Lord, and maybe something will happen. But I got to get a hold of Jesus and begin to press those things out of the way and say, I got to get to God. I got to press forward. I'm not looking back here. I'm pressing forward. I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize. I got the prize in my sights. I got Jesus. He's there. I got to get to him. I'm pressing. I'm pressing. I'm pressing. I don't know about you, but I think we need to press through some things here tonight. Those things that are trying to fight against you, the gates of hell, those thoughts that invade your mind, those thoughts that are trying to get in your family's life, those things that are trying to keep you from serving God. It's time to press through. It's time to call upon Jesus. There's no weapon formed against you. You can press through. You're going to make it. You're going to be blessed. You're going to be healed. You're going to be delivered. You're going to be set free. You don't have to stay in captivity. I press. I press. I press. I press. I got to get there. I got to get there. I press toward that mark. <laughs> There's a prize. There's a high calling. There's an anointing for someone here tonight. There's a blessing waiting for someone here tonight. There's a healing waiting for someone here tonight. But you gotta press. You gotta press. You gotta pursue. I'm not ready to quit. <laughs> Even though those thoughts invade your mind, you press on. Even if you lose your job, you press on. <laughs> Even if you feel like giving up, you press on. You see, I'm not ready to quit. I'm not ready to give up. I'm ready for some things to be moved. Depression be gone. Fear be gone. Sickness be gone. Doubt be gone. 
because I press on, I pray on, I worship on. I get in the word of God more and more and more. I go on and on and I rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. I rejoice with the Lord always. Not when things are just good, but at all times I will praise him. I will bless the Lord. I will lift my voice and I press. I press. No matter what comes against me, I press. I press. I got to get to God. I got to make up mine. Uh, no matter what I face, I count it all diverse temptations. That's what James said. No matter what comes against me, as for me and my house. It's a mindset. It's saying, I will not quit. Devil, you don't own this home. Devil, you don't belong here. You don't belong in this mind. You don't belong in the house of God. I believe God's getting ready to move some things out of your homes that's been invading for way too long. It's time for the glory of God, the train of his robe to fill the temple to fill your house to fill your heart to fill your mind when you press towards him that's exactly what happens God moves in the enemy moves out he's got to move out resist the devil and he will flee hey don't let him move in don't let him put a, pitch a tent outside and say I'll just be here a little while oh, oh. He'll move closer and closer and closer. And pretty soon he's talking to your kids. And pretty soon he's putting bad thoughts in your mind. And pretty soon he's saying, well, why don't you watch this? Or pretty soon he's saying, why don't you do this? It's not that bad. But he just gets there a little by little because we give inch by inch. But I'm not falling for the tricks of the devil. I'm not inviting him into my house. I'm not inviting him into my mind. I'm not inviting him into my heart. I'm pursuing God. I'm pursuing holiness. I'm pursuing the power of the Holy Ghost because I received that after the Holy Ghost came upon me and I'm going to pursue it. I'm going to help my family pursue it. I'm going to help my friends pursue it. You got to do your best. Can we all stand to our feet right now? Praise God. Oh, in order to win, you got to do your best. You got to press. You can't allow the enemy to push you around. The devil make you think what lays in front of you is too heavy for you to move. Greater is he that's in me. Greater is that power that lives within me. Because <laughs> he's able to do exceeding abundantly. Oh, exceeding abundantly. <laughs> not just a little bit. Not just kind of tipping over the edge, but it's exceeding. When something is exceeding, it's, it's a beyond expectation. Has ever something happened in your life where it becomes beyond expectation? That's the kind of expectation we need from God here tonight. We need to go beyond expectation of what God wants to do in our lives. We need to go beyond expectation of the service that's happening right now. And we need to go beyond expectation of the power of God that will move, that will touch every life, that will heal every sickness, that deliver every disease, that will heal every broken heart that will move upon souls that have not been filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost he'll fill them up overflowing it will become like pressed down shaken together running over and men will begin to give into your bosom because that's the God we serve he goes above and beyond because he doesn't just give you exactly what you need you can get that but if you don't press on, you're not going to receive obscene abundantly. I press. No matter what comes against me, I press. No matter how tough it gets, I pursue you. <laughs> uh, you can't change your past, but you can live in the present with purpose. And you can see where your future is going to end up. <laughs> streets of gold <laughs> gates of purple <laughs> walking on those streets no more pain no more sorrow no more tears no more heartache no more politics no more than any of that stuff <laughs> oh, our future is found in a heavenly place and I'm pursuing it here tonight does anybody want to join me in that pursuit of the things of God tonight are you ready to receive a blessing from God like you've never had before or are you just ready for the same old same old let the devil tell you you, you don't need it here tonight. I, I, I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. I want the blessings of God. I need another fresh dose of the Holy Ghost and fire. Let it burn those impurities out. Let's get rid of that.
of that sin. Let's get rid of all those thoughts. And let's get a hold of the things of God. Praise God. I'm inviting you all to come up to this altar right now. It's time to pursue God. It's time to get on your knees, fall on your face, jump, dance, shout. But it's time to press toward the mark. It's time to pursue it. It's time to pursue a blessing from God. It's time to pursue your anointing. It's time to pursue your calling. It's time to make your calling an election sure. When you do it in the name of Jesus, there is no devil in hell that can stop you when you get a hold of the name of Jesus. Can we do that right now? Can we just begin to worship God. Lift your hands, lift your voice. Whatever you got to do, go ahead and press on. I press on. I need you, Jesus. I need your touch. I need another fresh dose. I need to be filled for the first time. Oh, whatever you need from God, he's here. He's able to do it. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Now come on, let's say worship God right now. Hallelujah. Oh Jesus, Jesus. Oh Jesus, Jesus. Oh Jesus. No matter what comes my way, I'll lift my voice and sing. Hallelujah. Anyhow, wait a minute, one more time, I think I'll say it again. God's been so good to me, he's my closest friend. I've come too far to turn around now. I'm going to stand, I'm going to wait, watch God work it out somehow. No matter what comes my way, I'm going to lift my voice. Someone get a hold of the name of Jesus right now. I believe I'll testify. God's been good. God saved my soul. God healed my body. God set me free. God delivered me. He's that kind of God. So I'm going to praise him anyhow. No matter what comes against me, I will bless the Lord.
Oh, 